Kwan and Sharonda from Pay Your Weights, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Handmaid's Tale Season 4, Episode 2, Nightshade. So, you guys, I'm sorry I'm late getting these out to you. I apologize. However, we will be back on track. I'm just a little busy this week. Um, also, too, I want to let you guys know before I get into this week's um, episode, I do want to let you know we have some interviews coming up with um, Raggedy Fred with Janine, with Rita. Um, so I'm going to post those next week. I hope that you guys will enjoy them as much as I did talking um, with these actors. But getting into the episode. So we see that the Guardians, they come to look for um, basically the person they killed. You know, she gave her a knife and told her to make her proud. And so essentially they're coming to look for him. However, Mrs. Key, she's able to keep the act up, to keep them at bay. Um, obviously this man had a drinking problem because they said one time he was so drunk that he just passed out and disappeared for days. So she's able to keep them at bay, but June knows that this means that they need to leave because if they're coming, they came to her, they will be back again. So she arranges a meeting with the Mayday contact. However, June has to go meet with the contact in person. Um, so we find out that this contact is at a brothel. And so essentially we find out that she was brought there from Boston, which is the brothel that I guess after Commander Wilson was murdered by June with her pen, as she clarified for us in this week's episode, that the women were shipped off. Some of the women were shipped off and cleared herself to, um, to the place where they are now. However, some women were not so lucky. So essentially she tells her there's somewhere we can go, um, take you to. There's a new house um, with the Murrows. It's a yellow farmhouse 13 miles um, away. However, you won't be able to leave until tomorrow because I can't send word until then. Um, June tells her that this isn't going to work because we have to leave tonight because they're going to be back to check to figure out where this man is. And so they end up basically she comes up with this idea that she wants to help these women because now june is like the i know i'm probably gonna get flack for this she is the gilead harriet tubman of some sorts in gilead and so essentially she wants to liberate these women since she feels that she is a poster child for may day um and i like that Alma was like girl are you actually like trying to help them or are you just wanting to kill more commanders and she was like sis both and i was like ma'am this is not okay it's not all right however um, we see that Mrs. Mrs. Keys comes in when they're having this conversation. Everyone stopped talking. I was like, now that's the last person y'all need to be doing that around. And of course, she looking at them weird like, why y'all stop talking when I walk up in this room? I don't like that. And I was just like, I mean, y'all in her house. I can't blame her. But June goes to have a conversation with her and she lets her know what's going on. And I feel so bad for Mrs. Keys because she was just like, don't leave me here. Like, I need to come with you. And it's almost as if there's someone else that's abandoning her. Her family abandoned her when she sent her to marry Mr. Keys, uh, Commander Keys. And then also to now June is abandoning her, even though June is tr June claims that she's doing this to protect her. But we know June is very selfish, which I'll get into a little bit after we talk about Mora. But um, she basically convinces June to let her come with her. And so she asked her, she was like, sis, have you been poisoning Mr. Keys? And I was like, but had she? And so essentially she was just like, now sis, you learned some things at a farm. And I was like, I mean, I know you learn how to take care of animals, you know, how to plant stuff. I don't know that they teach you how to poison people. The last time I checked, that's not something that I learned at the farm that I used to work on. But hey, it is what it is. So essentially, they devise this plan. She teaches her how to make the poison that she's been using to poison him. And I think that it was really interesting because she was like, how long have you been doing this? And she was like, not soon enough. And I was like, wow, like the level of hatred that you have. I felt that. So she comes up with this plan. And essentially, um, she goes back to she goes back to the brothel, and she gives presents the choices um, to her contact for Mayday, and she's apprehensive. But when the Martha comes in, and you know they try to play things off, and then she called the girl little piggy. I was like, little piggy, what? And so essentially, the girl was like, girl, go ahead and keep giving that damn bottle, okay? That's not how she said it, but you know that's what she really wanted to say. So they end up. Um, drugging the entire house. I'm assuming everyone is dead by now. And then, you know, the, Mar the, what do you call them? One of the aunts was like, hey, I want some tea. And girl, they didn't poison. They poisoned the aunt too. I was just like, I ain't mad at you because I was just like, so y'all just sitting up here doing brothels. And it brings me back to the fact that you tried to call the handmaids sinful whores. And you out here whoring around. Speaking of whoring around, let's talk about Serena and Raggedy Fred. So, I mean, yeah, I'll come back to June because we got to talk about the end of the episode because, you know, I have 
Ooh, my heart was not right in this world. But let's talk about Serena. So because of these charges that Fred has brought against Serena in retaliation to her betraying him, um, she um, essentially she ends up going to get examined. And when the lady asked her like about her finger, and she was just like, this was a rightful punishment. And I was like, ma'am, why are you still taking up for this raggedy man? I'm really trying to figure this out. Help me to understand you, all right? So then they asked her like, hey, has your husband ever raped you or anything like that? And she was like, no, has he ever had sex with someone outside of you and your handmaid? Unprotected, she was like, yes. Hmm. The nurse is like, let me get an STD panel as well. I was like, are you sitting up here taking, the care, taking up for this raggedy man? And he's sitting up here raw dogging. He raw dogging people. He nasty. So, um, also too, now this was disrespectful because as a nurse, you should not do this. However, I felt her petty. Her petty was like the level of petty that I would have had. And when she asked her, has he ever hit you anywhere else that you haven't told us already? And she was like, actually right here. And then she was like, oh, was that a, was that a just, a justly punishment too? A rightful punishment too? I was like, oh, now you know you're not supposed to be saying that. You are not supposed to do that. But it's Serena and I don't like her. So I was here for it, but I was internally as a woman, I was not here for it. I felt the moral conflict, but I still giggle. I still chuckle. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to keep it real with you guys at the petty of the nurse. So... Even uh, Mr. Tuello, he just seemed like, girl, can you explain to me why you really sitting up here taking up for Fred? And I find it interesting um, that she tells him bef because I knew him before Gilead. And it's even more interesting when she tries to go to Fred and kiss up to him and try to be all nice to him and butter him up. He was like, honey, sweetie, you get rusty at this girl because that had no effect on me. But I love that he tells she was like, I thought when I if I got you here that you would be different. Um, without the suit outside of Gilead. And he was like, baby girl, baby girl, I'm who you made me to be, who you made us to be. And I'm happy that Fred is able to recognize how Serena, even though Fred ain't ish either, but Serena mo manipulated him into being on board with Gilead. Um, especially when you see the backstory in previous seasons with these two as a couple, um, how it was her rhetoric, her book that really pushed Gilead to become what it was. It's interesting that now all of a sudden Serena wants to just play the innocent card like, oh, what was me? It wasn't me. Girl, you came up with the whole thing, sis. Did you forget? So I was really happy that he said that. And when he said, girl, if you think that was going to work on me, you're delusional. I died. So... We see that at the end of the, um, when Serena's outside, she's waiting around Mr. Tuello. Um, he basically ends up telling her that she's pregnant. And I was just like, this raggedy heifer cannot be, you just stole. I just need a moment. I'm sorry. Cause I'm trying to be respectful. Okay. I'm trying to be respectful, but I just, the Lord is going to bless your raggedy behind with a kid. You, you, Serena, you don't deserve. Okay. So I'm very upset about that. However, I need, um, I need Luke to work on his public speaking because I was just like, Luke, I need you to do better than what you did. I'm happy that my homegirl Rita, okay, looking good in her regular clothes, came to help save you. I love how she says, like, you know, Gilead brought out the worst in people, but June brought out the best. Um, how, you know, basically even more talking about how guilty she feels, uh, you know, when she's asked, why does she feel the, compelled to clean up June's messes that Moira is still dealing with her guilt of, you know, leaving June behind. But I see that Moira got a new little boo thing. You're going to make that work. Okay. I saw her try to finish work early and get back to her boo thing. But one of the moments that I truly appreciate is, um, I love how she helps Asher, who was a kid who was one of the 86 children out of Gilead. You know, I love this showing the, the bigger world because we get to see how this affects those kids, right? We get to see how being a part of this society, they don't know any better. These are the only people that they've actually known. So the psychological effects, the PTSD, the trauma, how do these children deal with that? I love that they showcase Asher's story. Um, and I love even more how she tries to tell Asher's aunt, like, hey, like, this is all that he has known. Um, you remember who his father was, like who he was as a child, but that's not his life. And so I like how she brought Rita over and how Rita cook for him to make him feel more at home. I thought that was really cute. But I do like that Mora acknowledges that June makes decisions that she doesn't think about others. 
she just thought that she wanted to stick it to Gilead and get these children out. And that would be the biggest F you that she could possibly do. Like Moira said, F the consequences. Um, and I'm happy that she's able to acknowledge that, that Ju June is a very selfish person. In her heart, she thinks she's doing the right thing, but she's really just self-serving to her needs, her wants, her revenge plot against Gilead. So I was happy that she was able to recognize that. However, Nick. So after June ends up killing all these people, uh, poisoning everyone, she comes back and she's like, something's not right. And then she gets out of the car um, and the guardian ends up being shot. And then we see Nick's raggedy behind. But side note though, even though Nick ain't ish right now, I will like to say, hey Nick, you was looking cute in that coat, boo. You still ain't ish, but you was getting in the coat. You know, I love me a man with a nice tailored coat, honey. That, that, <laughs> all right. So even she has to think about it cause he gonna whisper in her ear like, I'm just trying to keep you alive. And I was like, Nick, I can't trust you right now, but because you're killing it in that coat, I'm going to let it slide. I ain't going to let it slide because Nick ain't ish right now. I don't know what's happening. But basically, he allows them to arrest her and then the episode goes off. So I don't know what's going to happen. He trying to figure out where the handmaid's at. I'm trying to figure out, Nick, whose side are you on? Have you been completely brainwashed? Are you really trying to protect June? I don't know what the heck is going on. But that raggedy beast, Serena, is pregnant. And I am upset. I am heated. I am so upset. But these episodes keep getting bigger, better and better with these re uh, revelations. Um, but I can't wait to see the detriment of uh, Fred and Serena's marriage because they are both toxic. They're in a toxic relationship. I can't wait to see how that plays out. And I can't, I'm happy that Moira got her little boo thing. Okay, I see you, boo. But... You know, overall, I thought it was a great episode. I think it really upped the ante of June being caught, even though this is never any cycle. June gets away. Then she gets captured again. And now we're here again to see how the pieces will fall into place. I don't know, but those, actually, I do know because I watched the episodes, but I'm going to say I don't know for the sake, the purpose of this, this recap. But those are my thoughts on The Handmaid's Tale Season 4, Episode 2, Nightshade. As always, my name is Sharana from Payroll Weights. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit the notification bell. And I love you guys 3,000. And until I see you again, bye!